area of the city. Uh, and so there's different types of neighborhood depending on the types of buildings. Once you put together that industrial neighborhood with the residential neighborhoods, with the uh, commercial neighborhoods, with the uh, government district, you get yourself a small town or a city of a certain size. I'm going to explain this when we come back to dinner because this uh, it needs a little bit of theory, the same thing with this. But I will explain when we come back from lunch how several cities organize a region. And it's a well-studied process. How then different regions stick together to form a province, and how then different provinces, typically through warfare, get stitched together into a territorial state. For instance, how the province of Burgundy and the province of the Ile de France, each one with its own cities, Lyon and Paris, were separate provinces for a long time. And when they came together to form France, they didn't come together to form France. Hey, yeah, let's come together to form France. They came together because the king, residing in Paris, conquered for Burgundy. So warfare either is what puts together territorial states or what keeps them from breaking apart again. Any threat of secession, like when the lower states, the southern states of the United States, threatened to secede, to break from the from the from, from the nation state during over the problem of slavery during the Civil War, it was through a civil war that it was kept intact. So the higher you get, the more violent the means needed to keep the thing together. Now I'm going to prove that later on tonight. Right? One thing that is very important to say is this, and this is the red arrows. Everybody's <laughs> not laughing. Oh my, my God, and that's a part one. Okay, very, very fast. Very, very fast. What the red arrows mean is that this sequence of emergence should not be read as if it was a historical sequence. It is not as if we had to wait for every single building to be there for there to be a neighborhood. Many times there is a neighborhood, some buildings get destroyed, and a new building is put together in a neighborhood that already exists. So it's not as if this had to precede temporally. It's simply that it is a part of all relationship. The same thing with neighborhoods. Many neighborhoods come into being once a city has already come into being. So a neighborhood that used to be an industrial district becomes abandoned. People move, uh, people move their factories to the suburbs or move their factories to a place with lower rent. Then immigrants come and take advantage of the cheap rents in that industrial place. And then artists move in to try to get, take also advantage of the cheap rents and they begin a process of gentrification in which they, by, the, by the being artists and by being cool and, 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 and coffee shops opening up and so on, their rents go up, the immigrants are, 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 are kind of kicked out and now it becomes an artistic little neighborhood. So neighborhoods that have a history that occur once they are already part of cities. But they are of course influenced by the city. The city has zoning laws, the city has certain regulations that will allow a neighborhood to be this or that. For instance, in Soho, the artist neighborhood that used to be an industrial neighborhood in New York, it was illegal, according to the city, to have your lofts, because it was not a residential neighborhood. Artists nevertheless moved in and, violating the law, managed to eventually get rights to their lofts, but for a while they were squatters. They were kind of squatters with money, but squatters because the cities, the city exercises constraints over what can be a neighborhood and cannot be a neighborhood. The same thing with regions, they react back on cities, even though they emerge from the interactions from cities. So what we're going to see, what the first thing I'm going to talk about tonight, we already saw how, we, and we need to eat, I'm sure, we already saw how to get rid of the notion of the state. I'm going to start the four o'clock session session by telling you how to get rid of the notion of the market. Okay? We're going to need this. In particular, we're going to need this to start at this particular part of the diagram to show you the historical birth of the different trading areas, which eventually we end up calling the market, but there are very concrete, singular entities all along. Okay? See you at 4 o'clock.